Hey Journey, Pastor Ron here. It's great to be with you again. We're gonna continue through the book of Ephesians. We were going through uh, Ephesians before Easter. Now we're gonna continue on through over the next couple months here. For the next few weeks, we wanna talk about life hacks, how to help us through tough times and rough relationships. And these life hacks are for marriage, they're for our families, for our jobs, our neighborhoods and communities, things that will help us, especially during the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Now, what is basically a life hack? A life hack is a simple or clever tip for accomplishing something to help us be more efficient or effective. Now, I have a couple, I don't know if they're really life hacks, but something I love. One is years ago, I bought, really I actually got it free, so it was awesome, a little coffee frother. I know you're judging me right now, but I put some heavy cream in my coffee, I froth it up, then pour the coffee in. Changed my life, um, and thank you. You may judge me and write me a little note. I get it. The other one that I discovered was recently when Chick-fil-A opened up in Medford and I got tired of waiting in line. And I have discovered a life hack for Chick-fil-A so that I can be ahead of all of you and get my food way quicker. But I'm not gonna tell you what it is, otherwise you'd be ahead of me. So here's what I would like. I would like to hear your life hacks. Do you got any food, cooking, phone, uh, job, relationship uh, life hacks that you could share with me. Go on to my Facebook page, the church Facebook page, go to our website, get my email, send me those life hacks. I'd love to hear them and see what you're discovering to help you in life. All right, now let's talk a little bit about what Paul is saying to us. Now last, uh, last time we went through Ephesians, Brent shared with us the first part of Ephesians and some very important things that Paul said to the church a couple thousand years ago. We want to continue on with that in verses 15 through 20 of chapter 5. Paul kind of gives some Christian living life hacks that are really important for us. Now, we're not going to talk all about them today, but they're very wise things. In fact, he starts off and he says, live wise, make the most of every opportunity understand what the Lord wants you to do and do that. He says, don't be drunk, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he says, sing and make music to the Lord. Give thanks for everything. Those are awesome little life hacks to help us regardless of the circumstances that we find ourselves in. But then he has a linking sentence that will link what I just shared with you to then what is coming for the rest of chapter five concerning marriage. But I wanna focus on this one linking sentence today that he gives us. It's verse 21 in chapter five. He says, and further after these things, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So he looks back and gives us these beautiful things to experience and live by. And then he's gonna now link it to what's forward concerning marriage, family, kids, parenting, your jobs. So here's life hack number one for this series. It is mutual submission. What is it according to the Bible, this submitting to one another that Paul speaks of? Well, it means this, to accept or yield to a stronger or superior force or person. It's to consider something with great weight. It's alignment. As a follower of Christ, it's aligning my will and freedom with God's will and freedom. Now, this is a big deal 2,000 years ago, and really still today, uh, this type of uh, submission was different. Uh, Roman power was in authority back in the day, and it flowed in one direction. This submission flowed from up or, or down to up from lesser to greater, it was more of a force that they would have upon the people. But now what Paul does in the scriptures that we'll look at today, he calls the dominant person to submit to one another, to submit to someone else. He puts everybody kind of in the same category, the same grouping. We are all to submit to one another in all areas of life. So, how would this, if, if you think about this with me and look forward to what we're gonna say, and as I'm telling you today these things, 
I wonder if you would consider how would this transform your marriage, your relationships, your family life, your jobs, your community and neighborhood. Now, here's what biblical submission means according to scripture. We're just going to touch on it today, but I would love it if you would dig a little deeper and ask questions. And then I am going to leave out the whole marriage aspect and address it on our Monday morning uh, sermon extra. But here's biblical submission. Number one, it's an all call. This is for all followers of Jesus. It's not to a select group. If it's only to a select group, we find that it leads to abuse. So it's for all of us. This is mutual submission to one another. Romans 12, three through five says these words, because of the privilege and authority that God has given me, I give each of you this warning, Paul writes, don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. That's biblical submission. That is mutual. We all have a part to play. We are all important. Don't think too highly of yourself. So we're in this together. We're all in it. Biblical submission is also continuous. It's not just when I feel like it or it's easy. So the idea is in this walk, this life hack is we keep submitting. We keep um, looking at people this way and submitting to one another. James 4, 7 kind of gives this perspective when it says, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. We have got to keep resisting by continually submitting. And so we see then that it's also an opportunity. So biblical submission is an opportunity. It's not just obedience. I don't just wait for someone to give me an order to follow, to submit. I seek out opportunities to serve. Galatians 5, 13 and 14 teaches us this. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom, your freedom to submit, to serve one another in love. For the whole law could be summed up in one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you are always biting and devouring one another, watch out, beware of destroying one another. So we look at it as an opportunity to serve. We're not forced to submit. The other thing that we learn is the Bible teaches us that it's a choice. Submitting is a choice I make. It's not just something I naturally do, a decision, an act of my will. In fact, Jesus invites us to it. Paul and the writers invite us to submit. One telltale sign in this choice and decision perspective is this, and maybe you could ask yourself this, do I need to get my own way? Now, Jesus will even speak of this in Mark 8, 34. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. Each day, even during these circumstances in our homes and what we're dealing with, we are making choices and decisions each day. Do I need to get my own way or am I willing to submit? I mean, ultimately to Jesus, but to one another. The last thing with this is this. The Bible teaches us that submitting is an expression of the image of God to one another. So this has a lot to do how I view others and Jesus. It shows about uh, the, the, the worth that I view concerning others. Like, how do I see them? If I see them as children of God, then I will operate differently, make decisions differently, and I will submit differently. 
So if not, it can be used as a tool of abuse or it can be demeaning to women. In fact, again, we'll look at that on Monday. We will see what God tells us men on how we are to treat women, in particular our wives and our families. So it's an expression of the image of God to one another and that's concerning how I view others, but it's also how I view Jesus. How I view Jesus directly overflows into how we live like Jesus. So now submission to him matters. This is where I'll start living like him and loving like him. So when we submit mutually to one another, we are displaying the image of God to one another. All right, so here are some just more practical things for us to consider as we wrap up this look at Ephesians and mutual submission, this life hack number one. How do I do this? Well, one, it's going to take practice. So I would encourage you to find simple ways each day, small little acts of practice that you can do even in your own home. Maybe you can think about the very things that I asked you earlier. Do I need the last word? Give someone else the first place. Do I need my own way? Can't I release it to someone else? Submission, someone wrote in this practice, is like a divine dance. And so as you're practicing, it's almost like you're dancing around with one another. At times one is leading and then the other one. It's something mutual. We find this even in the life of Jesus, where he, you could say practiced, but he had some tension in it as well. It was definitely a divine dance. In Matthew 26, before he goes to the cross, he goes to pray and that tension and brokenness came out and we find him submitting when he says, Lord, if you can take this, Father, if you can take this from me, do it, but not my will, but yours be done. Each day, for a lot of us, especially in the circumstances we find ourselves in, it's going to take practice. It's going to probably take times where we fail and you're going to have to apologize and say you're sorry. But do I need the last word? Do I need my own way? Practice that. Two, it's going to be about how we position ourselves. Who's going to go first? Uh, expressing to someone how valuable they are. And by doing that, you're making them even greater than you. So I wonder each day, how do you position yourself? This is where we serve and it becomes an expression of our love for God and for one another. Let, let me read to you uh, this whole um, it, it, like impression, this picture of Jesus that Paul actually writes again to the Philippian church. He says this in Philippians chapter 2, Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from His love? Any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy, church, by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, working together with one mind and purpose. And he gives even more little life hacks. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. And then he says these words, you must have the same attitude that Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges, submitting. He took, here it is, the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God. He died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names. That at that name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth. And every tongue declare that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is Jesus taking a position. Wow. We see that um, 
so, so much, like the abuse of it in relationships. What if you positioned yourself differently and took on the same attitude of Jesus? The other thing is posture. So we got to practice. We need to look at our position in life and how we express it and use it. But then there's a posture to it. It's a posture of humility that leads one to serve. We then open up our hands. It's our posture to give and at times receive. It's also, also the posture of vulnerability where I'm not getting my way. It's an open heart. I release power and control. In Mark 10, Jesus would give the disciples, his followers, and then us 2,000 years later today, a picture of what the proper posture is like. In Mark 10, 42 through 45, he tells them this. When uh, the 10 other disciples heard what James and John had asked, they got indignant. They were upset. For James and John had asked for the position and place alongside Jesus to be greater than the rest of the disciples. Well, that really kind of ticked them off. So Jesus calls everyone together and he says, you know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, among us, it's going to be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. This is the posture. And whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of everyone else. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus would take it further and his posture would be kneeling down and washing their feet before he went to the cross to die. That's posture. How about you? What posture could you, should you take in your marriage, your family, your job? Think about that today with me. So this is the way of Jesus. This is radical, mutual submission. Jesus showed us this in his life, his death. He called us to this life as well. You want to follow me? Here's what you do. So what do we do today? Just to wrap up. One, very simply, we start, this is the greatest life hack of all. Submit yourself to God. This will change your life. You submit your entire heart, life, soul, mind, strength to the one who created this. Submit yourself to God. James 4, 7 tells us to do that. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Are you struggling in life? Is the enemy against you pounding you? Even now, I want to encourage you. If you have not, then start today with life hack number one. Submit yourself to God. Two, I want to encourage all of us and men in our marriages and families, looking forward to where we're going with this part in Ephesians, submit to your family. Practice. And take on a posture of humility and vulnerability with your family. And then two, three, submit to your community. What does that look like? It's your neighborhood. It's your job. It's our nation. It's the world. What if we all submitted in a way that was with uh, humility and vulnerability and even more service, serving and loving. What if we did that? Would it change anything? Now, I want to let you know something kind of in advance. This has, the scriptures tell us, a practical implications for life right now. It matters. This will make a difference in your life personally and your family's life and our world, especially with what we're dealing with. But what we're going to learn in a few weeks is that it also has heavenly implications. Like this matters on earth right now, but it also makes a difference for the future. Something greater and bigger going on. So life hack number one, life hack number one 
mutual submission. Would you consider today submitting yourself to God and your family and your world? Hey, we love you. You definitely matter. And by living this way, you can make a difference. Let me pray. Father, thank you for this time that we could share with these people that we love. We long for the day that we can be back together again. But right now, we can make a difference. So if there is anyone listening right now, whatever day it is, whatever moment it is, Lord, if they have not submitted their life to you and they need life change, God, I pray that they give, submit their life today to you, God, by simply coming and saying, I need you, God. Take my life. I give up my own way and I give it to you. Father, touch them today. Meet needs right where they're at. There are people out there isolated, hurting, struggling. We lift them up to you and ask that you meet them, Lord. Let them know that they're loved and cared for and not alone. Lord, thank you for all those that are doing a great work to help save lives, touch people, care, and serve. So many, even frontline workers and so many more have already practiced this right now by submitting themselves to others, making others more important and greater, and not trying to get their own way, but they're giving their lives away. Thank you for all of that. And thank you again, Lord, for Jesus our Savior, your Son, who lived, died, and rose again so that we could have new life. And it's in him, His name we pray. Amen.